at our birth. It's about getting our name in a register and creating title. Because once it's entered, they have title. Now we know enough about title as a claim of ownership, a right of ownership, to think about what that means when they claim our name and therefore claim title. We'll come to slavery in a second. I just want to talk about foreclosures and property. I know time is running out and I did promise that I would talk about it, so I'm just going to cover a couple of things on foreclosures. I'm building and we're building, thanks to your help and input, a set of parallel notes on saving your home and obtaining free and clear title, which is why what I'm describing is important. And if you understand what we just said there about title, you'd understand the power under the covenant of the most powerful register to ever exist in this temporal plane, being the great register and public record of one heaven. Now, if, if, a, if an entry into a register of a trust is a claim of right, then there is no greater claim of right that anyone could ever make than to have an entry into the register of the great register and public record of one heaven. And that is exactly what your trust numbers are. Now, your trust numbers are being extracted from a massive register, a sub-register of the great register, and that is the sub-register of Eucadian time which there is in excess of 4.5 million individual records per day from 10,000 BCE to 2,500 BCE, uh, 2,500 CE, 10,000 BCE to 2,500 CE. But what I'm working on in the next uh, few weeks is making sure that you can take your trust number and ensure that you can find it by searching the great register and it matching your name, matching your identity. And when you can match your trust number with your name and identity, and we can ensure that your live-born record is up to date, your live-born record then becomes a certificate of title, a proof of title, that cannot be denied by any court, any registrar, anyone in their system. It cannot and ultimately will not be denied. And if it will not be denied and it is proof of title, then it is proof of ownership of your name, not them, proof of ownership of your flesh, not them, proof of ownership of your spirit, not them. And it is proof of their fraud. So I'm very keen to see that the live-born record process becomes automated for all of you, and I thank you for your patience, but we're working on it. In the interim, for anyone that is at the 11th hour, the artwork is still up there on the site, and we will get that across. But it is working now, it is valid now, these are just automations. So with foreclosures, title is an essential element, and that's why I mention it. But the other element is having the notes and giving you some guidance as to how to deal with the matter. Now, some of you are dealing in states that don't have a foreclosure. It just goes through automatically. Others have foreclosure hearings. It varies. But there are a number of steps involved, and, I, and we are working towards giving people options of remedy depending upon where they are. And that includes how to deal with the issue of removing yourself from delinquency. Remember... As I said, what we've been doing with our own court cases have been putting ourselves in dishonour because they want us to be that. Well, exactly the same thing happens with a foreclosure. They convince us, the bank convinces us that unless we pay all the money, they'll kick us out because they do not want us to pay a consideration. Why? If we pay a consideration, then the contract is renegotiated and we cannot be claimed as delinquent. Remember, no one can be claimed as delinquent if they run out of money. No one. We can only be claimed delinquent and therefore have an order written against us 
if we don't pay. So I want to show how that can be handled. And even today, we had an issue of a refusal to accept a payment uh, that one was putting into a, a court where the clerks were saying, we won't accept it. Uh, I've still got to find out what the ultimate outcome of it is. So there is going to be some trials and tribulations because the system actually is refusing people to even have a chance of putting in some uh, consider consideration for each month that they haven't paid their rent, being the interest. So I'm very mindful that foreclosures is a massive issue for all of you and property is a massive issue for all of you and that's something that we're working on uh, to get up on the sites in the next couple of weeks. Slavery. It's the final point before we, we talk about um, uh, questions. So I'm just going to quick drink. One sec. So with all of this, I do understand that when you talk to a relative, like you might have spoken to them over Christmas and might have mentioned this and they laugh, we talk to a friend or a neighbour and they say this is all conspiracy theory and it's all mad. I, I, I understand that. But I want to talk about slavery as one of the most obvious proofs to anyone that can tie their shoelaces if they just think about what it means. Now, I want to thank, again, the guys in the UK who are doing research on this. And whilst I'm not going to quote word for word pieces of uh, Hansard and uh, records of Parliament uh, or sections of United Nations um, regarding um, uh, children or anything else, I'm, I'm going to reveal to you exactly the proof that does exist, and I'm sure you can go and find it, in terms of slavery. After the Jesuits, having made themselves over, came out in 1815, now no longer actively managing the assets, but franchising the management out, there was a conference in Vienna that followed that some years later. And it's famous in the history books because it's supposed to be where they banned the slave trade and they banned slavery. And when you go through and you talk to people about there being a global system of slavery operating by the banks, the first thing that uh, most educated people, quote unquote, or people who have a degree would say to you is, well, that's against the law. So that's complete rubbish. How can that happen because it's against the law? Well, let's be very clear here. We are dealing with lawyers. We are dealing with experts of language. Well... They did ban the slave trade because the slave trade used to be from one plantation to another. And they did ban unlawful slavery. And you, you should accept that. If someone says, no, it's rubbish, um, you say, well, no, they did. They did ban the slave trade and they did ban unlawful slavery. And by the way, Israel, the home of uh, Khazarian parasitic uh, families, amongst uh, others, many others, um, is the only country in the world that uh, slavery, there are no laws against slavery. But what they did is that they banned unlawful slavery and they banned the trade of slaves. There's no mention anywhere in any statute, law, proclamation from the United Nations. There is no mention of lawful slavery only unlawful slavery, involuntary slavery. Now, do you see the, the word difference there? Do you see the, the hair splitting there? And that's exactly what they did. Well, how did they, how did they overcome this issue of slave trade? Well, instead of having plantations shifting slaves around, they opened up a complete global slave system. And the global slave system they opened up was the system where everybody on the planet was going to get issued a birth certificate and everybody on the planet was going to be registered at birth. What do we just look at a register being? What does a register do? 
Well, once something is registered, title is created, a claim of ownership is created. And, and part of the proof that we will be able to show you is, as they wrote this out, it was made clear that if a person, indeed if a slave, is not in a register, then they are free. Only those who are not registered are free. Lawful slavery exists. Lawful slavery did not disappear. In fact, what happened in 1823 was the creation, finally, of laws, very clear laws about slavery and a global lawful slavery system by our friends, the Jesuits. Well, they're not our friends. I'm being facetious, but by the Jesuits and their agents. So lawful slavery exists. And you just go and look at the statutes. Nowhere in the United Nations or anywhere does it state that lawful slavery has been abolished. Now someone says, oh, well, that, you know, you're splitting hairs there. You know, you're, you're, you're pushing a long bow. You say no. It's very, very precise. The banks are not breaking any law on slavery in bonding us and owning our flesh, which is what the banks are doing. The banks are slave traders. Sorry, they're not slave traders, they're slave owners. They're not breaking any law because they did it lawfully, quote unquote. So I look forward to giving more information on that. I look forward to talking about that with you guys in, in, the, in the future. But people need to know it is not a conspiracy. Words mean something. And all they did was that they banned the slave trade by creating a global system where, where slaves are no longer traded and they banned unlawful slavery. How? By ensuring that the laws of slavery were consistent across the globe and that's what they did now given that i mentioned the word jesuits I'll, I'll i'll end on this one point i know that that continues to be an issue with people they keep saying well franco franco collins is he is he or isn't he i'm not why if the jesuits have created so much evil are they not in dishonor along with the seven deeds of dishonor and the reason is, is that technically they're not. They're the only group on the planet that's not in dishonor based on a meeting that took place last year. Now, if that meeting didn't take place, I would say to you, absolutely, the Jesuits are in dishonor. But the one thing the Jesuits have always been very, very conscious of, certainly since they reappeared in 1915, after their reorganization and that is to stay in honor now that's the challenge ultimately to those jesuits that listen to these calls that as we move forward and what we do is lawful and is with the complete authority of the divine and is demanding lawfully that people are recognized as emancipated and no longer being regarded as slaves and what is our property is conveyed to us when their agents refuse to obey. Then, of course, as we've put them in dishonor, they will stay in dishonor. And if by the end of this year, this year being the planned cycle of destroying the currencies of the world and returning us back to the gold standard before the end of this year, if indeed the Jesuits allow that process to take place and do not support this model, then they will be the first to be judged by Judgment Day. They will be the first to be judged. But until then, technically, they are in honour and it is ultimately up to them to see the validity of what we're doing, the truth of what we're doing and support us and certainly support us ensuring that their minions, their agents, follow their own laws. 
Well, we covered a lot again tonight.